Hello all. Today we're going to be looking at what is the bare minimum you need to get to space from a planetary start in Space Engineers. Now, these are a couple of the ships I have built in the past to do so in survival. Uh, this is one from quite a long time ago, back when planets used to have all resources. You can see I've got the ion thrusters and I actually have reactors and different things on here. But this ship can actually get to space with just hydrogen and whatnot. A uh, fairly decent ship, happy with it. This is one I built a little more recently. It's got the survival kit, which that one doesn't have because it didn't exist back in the day. And it's pretty much just hydrogen. I have some upward facing, uh, uh, what are these, atmospheric thrusters? Got some upward facing atmospheric thrusters just to help uh, conserve fuel when I'm close to the surface, but they're fairly simple. That said, even these ships are significantly more than you need if you just want to get to space and have a respawn. So we're going to take a look at what you really need to do that. Um, these blocks right here, this is pretty much all you're going to need. You're going to need a hydrogen thruster because there's really no way without ion thrusters to get to space. Um, you can use atmospheric thrusters to get up a little bit, but you'll always fall back down. So you're going to need a hydrogen thruster. You're going to need a way to produce hydrogen, so you're going to need your H2O2 generator. You're going to need power to power those things. Um, either batteries, if you can hook up and recharge or slap a solar panel on, or a, uh, an engine, a hydrogen engine. Now if you use a hydrogen engine, you're going to probably want to turn it off. You're going to want to still have batteries. You'll charge your batteries with your hydrogen engine, and then your batteries will be what powers your ship during flight. Um, lastly, you're probably going to need a survival kit nowadays so that you can respawn in space because that's a great option to have. And some sort of control seat. You can either use a cockpit. I like it for its convenience. Um, you get hooked up into the system and then you just jump in and control your ship. If you want to use a few less resources, you can always do the chair and the remote control option. This It takes less resources. It weighs less, so there's a little bit of a trade-off there. And now something I didn't know until recently actually, you don't need a hydrogen tank to make a hydrogen ship that can fly you to space. You can actually get enough hydrogen flow just from your H2O2 generator to lift a ship and to fly it to space. Um, super simple example of something like that, this right here will actually fly you to space. It's got all the parts you need. You'll get enough hydrogen flow. You just fill your H2O2 generator with ice. Um, in this specific example, you can't actually fill the cockpit with ice because then you'll weigh too much. So generally, in these style ships, you just want to fill your H2O2 generator with ice, and that'll give you enough ice to use as fuel to get you all the way to space. So you got an example like that. I think uh, this isn't a great example because it doesn't have a respawn. So yeah, it'll get you to space, but you're going to have nothing to do once you get up there. And as soon as you run out of power, you're, you're going to just die and respawn back on the surface. So a slightly larger ship that does pretty much the same thing, but has a respawn in something like this. Uh, it also has a larger battery, and it has a connector. So you can connect this to your base down on the planet. You can recharge your battery that way. Uh, this ship here has no way to recharge the battery. So it's a little bit awkward. You'll have to like slap something on here to recharge it and then take it off and then fly it. Uh, this has a way to recharge it built in with the connector option. It is quite heavy though. This ship will just barely get you up there. You probably don't want to fill anything but the H2O2 generator with ice and then you can fly up to space but then you have a respawn and you, you can build more materials and you can start a base from there. So this does work. Uh, you will have to recharge the battery uh, through a base or something though. However, because you have this large battery, you can actually make this ship fly around in atmosphere with just atmospheric thrusters. So it's kind of dual purpose. Um, I kind of I like that about this design. You can use it in you can use it without hydrogen. As long as you're not trying to go to space. But as soon as you're trying to go to space, again you're gonna have to, you know, just fill the H2O2 generator with ice, take pretty much nothing else. You'll be able to thrust upwards with your atmospheric thrusters at first, and then you'll have to switch to hydrogen at some point. I tried it in survival with this ship, and you will actually start losing velocity. Like Even with all your thrusters on at a certain point, 
but you will get past that point and then you'll start you'll start gaining speed again and you will make it to space so that's very doable uh, going back to something a little more simple you can you can opt for one of these designs minimal resources uh, this one again it doesn't have a way to charge its battery so you'll have to figure that one out uh, I actually just went and made a better version right away this one has the uh, the engine on it so you'll use the engine when it's parked to recharge your battery but when you're going to be in flight you need to turn the engine off because it will use all of the hydrogen that's produced by your H2O2 generator and you will get none going to your thrusters for lift so you use the engine to charge the battery, turn the engine off, and then you will fly using the battery power to power your other pieces. This is actually a very good design. I like this one a lot. It uses minimal blocks. I think it's only, uh, let's see, how many blocks is this? This is only 15 blocks. And this will very comfortably get you to space. You will have a respawn point. You have thrusters in all directions, so it's easy to fly around. and. Uh, it, uh, it feels pretty good to fly, honestly. So you just have to remember to turn the, the engine off, otherwise you won't be going anywhere. Now this, this uh, method of just using the H2O2 generator is scalable to an extent. You can do two generators and then you can have twice as many thrusters. The thing with, uh, the thing with doing this is with a design like these ones, say, you don't actually want to have two downwards facing thrusters because you're from the H2O2 generator, you're only getting enough hydrogen to fuel one thruster. If you put another thruster on, it's just splitting your hydrogen. You're not actually getting more upwards thrust. You're just going to be splitting your hydrogen fuel supply. And because now you have two thrusters, you have more weight, you're actually going to be getting net less thrust, thrust upwards if you use two thrusters facing down. But if you use two generators, then you can get away with the doing two thrusters down. So you got another set of these on this side. And uh, something like this can lift a little bit more because instead of having this whole ship lifted by the hydrogen from one H2O2 generator, you're lifting with two. So now this block is getting lifted with two, every block's getting lifted with two. I also, with any of these designs, if you just add a very small hydrogen tank, it's going to help you a ton. You don't even, ha like this one's set to stockpile. You don't even have to have it being used all the time. You just use it when you really want extra hydrogen flow to your thrusters. Like if you're maneuvering for a landing or something, I would, I would turn on my hydrogen tank so that I have maximal thrust while doing that. You don't need it on while you're flying though, unless you also want to have a hydrogen engine on then you will have enough flow to run your thrusters and your hydrogen engine. I still recommend turning off a hydrogen engine and operating on batteries while in flight because you're just going to get a lot more flow to your thrusters from your hydrogen generators. Also, something interesting to note, uh, one small battery is exactly enough to power two hydrogen generators. So if you're running or two H2O2 generators, so if you're running two of those, you're going to need more than one battery because you're going to need a battery to run both of those and then a battery to run everything else on your ship. So I like the small batteries because they're light and they're plenty, they produce plenty of power to run hydrogen, small hydrogen systems like this, but just make sure you actually have enough power output because you can run into weird situations where you don't if you start scaling these ships up. Uh, this is just another example of a way you can build a ship like this if you like standing up while flying. I think it's kind of strange, but some people like the like Star Wars speeder kind of thing. There's really an endless number of ways you can design ships like this. Uh, this one has a cargo container. I don't know how much you can actually fill that cargo container. I don't think you would probably be able to fill it entirely with materials, but you can have the car cargo container and then when you get to space you can fill it and fly around with it. So You just want to make sure your ship is as light as possible while trying to get to space with this type of setup. Basically you just want ice in your H2O2 generator, so you want everything else as empty as possible. And then you'll always be able to get to space. This ship down here is kind of, knowing all this information, this is kind of the one I came up with that I would potentially use in survival to get to space. Generally I build much more involved ships, 
but uh, this is a very basic simple ship that will get you to space. It has a survival kit. Uh, this timer block and button setup on the back is just my standard for survival setup. I have a timer block that turns back on the survival kit and then starts itself again, and then I have a button that turns off the survival kit. I often play in survival where respawn is forced, so you will spawn at the nearest survival kit of yours, and this just lets me respawn somewhere else if I want. I turn off my survival kit, kill myself, respawn somewhere else at the other base I want to respawn at, and then this one will automatically turn back on if I want to get back to this location. I do the same thing there, I respawn and I show up back here. So this will turn back on. I usually set the timer block to about a minute and a half, so I have plenty of time. If I have three or four bases or locations where I can respawn, that lets me turn off all the ones I don't want to go to and get to the one I do want to go to. So that's what that's all about. Otherwise, I am utilizing the small hydrogen tank that helps an absolute ton. This ship, for example, if I jump in it and I start flying, whenever it has enough lift just off the H2O2 generator to go up. If I start going forwards or backwards while the hydrogen tank is set to stockpile, so I have stockpile on now, this ship will actually start falling a little bit because I'm using my, uh, my hydrogen flow to go forwards and backwards while also trying to thrust up. This world is actually currently in creative because uh, I was trying to record this video and it was getting really annoying with uh, telling me that I ran out of fuel in my jetpack constantly because I was flying around. So in survival, this ship will actually drop a little bit when going forwards or backwards in atmosphere. But then I have the small hydrogen tank. I just flip that on. I can maneuver around with the hydrogen, extra hydrogen flow from the tank. I can maneuver when I'm close to the surface and it's no big deal. When I'm just going to space though, I can do that without using the tank, just using the stuff I am producing. And the reason, the reason you might want to do this entire setup with just the, the H2O2 generator and thrusters, not using tanks as your primary fuel source, is because in small ships like this, you actually will get more fuel efficiency out of just burning the ice and using it directly in your thrusters than turning the ice into hydrogen, storing it in a tank, and then using it from your tanks. It sounds crazy, but the way the uh, the like mass, the like weight to thrust ratio <laughs> overall ends up just being better if you're burning the ice and, and just using it to, to go. And then you don't need big clunky tanks. It's actually kind of convenient that they finally added a very small tank. Very small tanks are awesome. I definitely recommend slapping one on any of these ships. It'll make the ship better, but you don't actually need it. And if you're just going for simplicity and I just want to get to space, don't even bother with the tank. Just make a ship that can lift you and you can get to space very comfortably. Some other things to consider if you do want to make a larger ship, if you want to take things with you when you go to space so that you don't have to start from scratch. Um, definitely use a hydrogen tank. If you're gonna lift stuff, if you're gonna fill a cargo container with something, you're pretty much gonna have to use a hydrogen tank to get the hydrogen flow to your thrusters to lift your ship. That's just how it is. And if you can, the large tank in every way is more efficient than the small tank. So if you can put a large tank on your ship, just do it. Put multiple large tanks, it doesn't matter. You're, they're gonna get you way more than putting small tanks. You don't want to put a ton of small tanks on your ship. Just put a large tank. If you can get away with only putting one small tank or a couple small tanks, that's great. They take up a lot less space. But the large tanks are much more efficient. As far as cargo containers, the efficiency for like volume to weight and all that is almost exactly the same for all of them. So use whichever one is most convenient to you. I do not recommend ever using these small ones simply because you can't pass large components and other things through them. They're really silly. This uh, connector is the least efficient size and weight wise and carrying pe capacity and everything, but is the most useful <laughs> because it lets you attach to a base and then that lets you power your ship. And it has small connectors on all sides and a large connector on one side. So 
it is the most useful one to have. Um, usually, if I'm making a really simple ship, I will always have a connector. That will be my, my tiny cargo, and then it'll end up being a ship that looks like something like this, where I have the very bare minimum and my only cargo container is a connector. That's very often what I use. A few other things to consider. Um, I've been playing the game for a really long time, so whenever I'm building a landing gear, I always build the normal landing gear. But that's a 2 by 3 by one block, and it's a little bit heavier than the plates, and it does the exact same thing. So I've finally switched over to just using these plates. It lets me put them in much smaller areas. It lets me make ships that are a lot smaller. It lets me make ships that are the shape I want to make them. They're just a wonderful block overall. And like example, for an example, this ship here, um, one of the cool things about this ship is that I can actually launch the ship through a door if I want to, through a large grid door. It very comfortably fits through these doors. Um, large grid doors or large grid blocks in general are five small grid blocks wide and tall. So if you can keep your your small grid in a 4x4 four four cross section, you can actually fly through these doors. This ship is 3x3, three three, so it's very easy to fly through the door. But a 4x4 four four ship will also be able to fly through doors. It'll just be basically touching on all sides. So it's kind of just something neat that I really like. I've never actually built a ship that, or like a large ship where I would launch small ships out of doors, but I someday will for sure. I think it's really neat. Um, something else to note, the use of atmospheric thrusters. In almost all of my designs, where I'm building a ship that's going to go to space, I use atmospheric thrusters, and I almost always use them exclusively pushing me upwards. Because most of your fuel while taking off is going to be to push you upwards. Even while you're maneuvering for landing or doing things like that where you are going sideways, almost all of your hydrogen is getting used to lift your ship. So if you can slap a couple atmospheric thrusters on to lift, it will save you absolutely tons of fuel. You can see uh, both of my ships over here actually do that. They have atmospheric thrusters, but they only have them facing up. Um, I think this one actually has them facing forwards and backwards too, or a couple different directions, but that's not necessary. The upwards ones are really the crucial ones. They'll save you tons of fuel. So something worth, worth considering. Um, one of the issues with that is though, they take tons of power. So you will have to be using large batteries or reactors, which you don't have access to anything for reactors on planets anymore. So you're pretty much relegated to using large batteries because one of these small thrusters takes 600 kilowatts of energy. And the small batteries only output 200. So you'd need three small batteries to power one of these thrusters. Whereas the large batteries are like four megawatts, something like that. So something worth considering. I, I recommend doing them for upward thrust. They're gonna be worth it. If you put too many on, it's going to weigh your ship down when you switch to only being able to use hydrogen, but generally they're worth it. Something else to consider is always, always, always having parachutes. I've been playing the game for forever, and I still put parachutes on every single one of my ships, even though I know the ships work. User errors happen all the time, and my parachutes save my ships every time. So. I recommend putting parachutes on your ship. Try to make sure that you put them in places that make sense to get your ship to fall the way you want it to fall. And something else that I recommend is always putting your parachutes on the same button. So whenever you're in a ship, you can hit the same button and it will deploy your parachutes. For me, uh, the button I use is Control 3. So your Control Group 3. You can get to that by hitting control three and then three. <laughs> so in all of my ships, if I hit control three, three, 
I will open my parachutes. And I always set it to just open parachutes. I don't set it to open close because sometimes I'll like spam it twice just to make sure I hit it. And I don't want to open my parachutes and close them immediately. So I'll hit control three, three, my parachute will deploy in any of my ships I build. I don't have to think about, oh no, where's my parachute? Do I have to open my menu? I, I just hit the buttons. If I think I might land poorly, <laughs> if there's a chance, I always just open my parachutes and then it doesn't happen. It never happens. I haven't crashed a ship and destroyed it in a really long time because I've been using that system. So you should start using it too. The last kind of off consideration, something I don't have on any of those ships, but I would highly recommend if you're playing in survival and you're on a planet and there is weather, you should put decoy blocks on your ship. At least one, I kind of recommend having two because usually one will get destroyed and you'll forget about it. And then at least you have another one. So if you get struck by lightning again, because that's what the problem is, uh, you'll at least survive. It won't just hit your battery and then your ship falls out of the sky and it goes boom. Again, the parachutes will help with that for sure because parachutes generally don't get hit by lightning. So that's useful, but a decoy block, if you have a decoy block on your ship, the lightning will hit the decoy block instead of any of the other blocks. It'll prioritize decoy blocks that are on. So have a couple of those. I also recommend placing them one or two blocks off of anything important. So oftentimes I'll just put one or two armor blocks down and I'll throw a decoy block on top. That usually works. Also, decoy blocks don't take power, so I always thought they took power, but they don't take power, so just slap the decoy block on it'll save your ship for sure if you're flying in any sort of weather. And that's pretty much all the considerations I have when building a ship. Actually, there is one more thing I'd like to go over before I show you guys the last two rooms down there, and that is general takeoff procedure for any of these style ships, or just like any ship you want to take to space in Space Engineers. There's a few considerations. Um, one is you should always have your control seat or remote control or whatever you're using to control your ship facing forwards, not up. I've seen some people that like to build ships where you're sitting and you're looking upwards because you're gonna blast off into space. That's cool and that's great if you're doing it for immersion, but for practicality of use, you should have them facing horizontally in some direction. Because when you get in your control seat, you have this thing in the middle of your screen, in your HUD, that shows you which way is up. It shows you how level you are. And that is extremely useful for making sure you stay level while taking your ship off. So when I build ships that go to space, I don't put all my thrusters that are gonna lift me on the back. I put them facing down because I want to be facing forwards while I'm going up. I think that's that's something that in this game, um, most people do it. See, like my large thrusters are facing down because when I get in the ship and I want to take off, I want to be facing forwards so that first of all, I can fly around on the surface comfortably because all my lift is up. I'm just flying like a normal ship around the surface. And second of all, I can make sure I'm perfectly level while I'm going up. So I'm using the least amount of fuel possible. So there's that. Uh, the other thing that you pretty much always want to do while flying one of these ships is you want to get going, you know, get your speed moving a little bit. So you're just holding spacebar. You're making sure you're level, you're holding spacebar, and then you turn your inertial dampeners off. If you're perfectly level, or nearly perfectly level, you're not going to be sliding from side to side at all. This is going to save you fuel. And now this way, once I get up to full speed, I can release off my spacebar and I won't immediately start thrusting downwards to stop my ship. So that way I can I can release, I can just hover at max speed essentially without slowing myself down every time I come off the spacebar. I think that's incredibly important for fuel efficiency um, pretty much for any ship where you're going to space. If you are thrusting when you're already at max speed you are most likely wasting fuel unless you have just enough fuel to like maintain that exactly, um, which pretty much never happens. So in a couple seconds here, when I get to max speed, see it's kind of taking forever because this is a relatively heavy ship for being able to thrust off of one thruster from the hydrogen produced by one H2O2 generator. But 
I will eventually get to max speed. Oh, I kind of moved my ship, so I'm going to make sure I'm level again. So I'm level. Now I'm at max speed. As soon as you get to max speed, you want to release off the space bar. And if you have your inertial dampeners off, your ship won't try to slow itself down. See, if I turn my inertial dampeners on and I release space bar, I'll start thrusting downwards, which I don't want to do. I want to be going to space. So turn your inertial dampeners off, level your ship, and just thrust up. That's all you want to do. Every time you get close to max speed, you let it drop. You take your thumb or whatever off spacebar. You let your speed drop down to 90 or something. I like to keep it as fast as possible because I don't like wasting time. But it doesn't really matter as long as you're not thrusting while you're at max speed. And that way you'll, you'll conserve as much fuel as possible so that when you get to space, you have plenty of fuel to fly around. Maybe come back down and land if you want to. But I think that's extremely valuable to know. And uh, hopefully that helps. Um, there are a few more things I just want to show you that I thought were hilarious that I found out while making this video. First of all, this little ship here, the starter pod you get whenever you plop yourself onto a planet beginning in survival, this ship can take you to space. It has everything you need and it weighs little enough that you can take this ship to space if you want. If you want to see a video of me doing that, I have one. The link will be somewhere on the card at the end of this video. But basically the way you do it is you're going to want to, say you spawn in the first time, and uh, you have progression on because you're playing in survival. Progression is on. You're not going to be able to build what you want to build. So the first thing you do is you grind down landing gear, reweld it. That'll give you access to building a remote control. If you don't want to use the survival kit, to make remote control parts, what you can do is you can grind down the timer block, the beacon block, and the parachute block, none of which you are going to need to fly this thing, and then you can build a remote control. The remote control will unlock a gyroscope, and then you can grind down, basically you grind down one of the thrusters and pick one of these two things up here, either the antenna or the ore detector, grind one of those down, basically all you need out of that is the computer, and then you'll be able to build a, uh, a gyroscope. And from that point, all you have to do is fill the H2O2 generator with ice. Take this junk out, because you don't need it. Fill it with ice, and then you can fly to space. Easily enough. It's pretty awesome. I did not know that. But this ship does have one hydrogen thruster hiding deep down underneath there. And that's all you need. That's all you need to fly to space. It's pretty awesome. The last thing I want to leave you guys with is this setup right here. This is the simplest setup I could come up with that can take a player to space. Sure, you could go to space by just filling your inventory with hydrogen bottles, but if you want to use blocks to get you to space, all you need is these three. Careful not to tip it over when you get on top of it, but you just get on top of it, open up the inventory, fill it with ice, turn your thruster on, and then thruster override. Now as long as you don't jump, you can walk around on this. It doesn't matter. It is literally just a space elevator. And you only need to set up the... Uh... Oh yeah, I'm not looking at it. What am I doing? You only need to thrust override just enough to get you off the ground. You want to save your fuel. So as long as you're not slowing down, you can just turn down the thrust override. But this will get you to space very comfortably. There's nothing to do when you get there, but I thought it was pretty cool. As I blast off into space here, I'd just like to thank you all for watching. Hopefully you learned something new, something that you can apply to your ship building that makes it easier for you to get to space. If you're interested in trying out the ships you saw in this video for yourself, I do have a link to the world where you can download it yourself and you can play with them. That'll be in the description down below. I also have links to the first two ships you see in the video, the ones that I've used in the past. Those are on my workshop as well. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.